Hey, what's going on, everybody? BDO44 coming at you another video. All right, so now we're talking Philadelphia 76ers versus the Miami Heat game three. Um, got some news on Joel Embiid. He did clear concussion protocol, um, but is still listed as out for game three. So I don't know why, <laughs> to be completely honest with you. Uh, I'm hearing um, that they've had some special mask that they've been making uh, concocting up for this process and, you know they're excited to uh, put this mask on uh, display since it's the new and improved and you know given the fact that a lot of emphasis has been putting on masks over the last two years since the you know COVID product COVID is coming to our lives uh, I'm fairly optimistic that they've made some substantial jumps over the last year and a half with mask just in general across the board so with that being said i don't think he's going to be missed tonight's game i don't i don't think he's going to miss tonight's game at all i do believe that he will be a last minute throw in because he he has to play if if you're not going to bring him back tonight shut him down simple as that unless you somehow magically win this game without him which um well <laughs> i guess that's what we're here to talk about uh the philadelphia 76ers are having a very difficult time dealing with the Miami Heat on just about all fronts. They had a game with them in game two where they played very well through a few quarters and then Tyler Hero came in and just busted up the situation. I think the same thing happened in game one too, if I'm not mistaken, but either way, the point is this. They're struggling in just about every facet necessary to beat this team. They can't defend. They're not getting a whole lot out of their bench. They're not getting a whole lot out of their stars. And really, they're not getting a whole lot um, just going for themselves in terms of the other team. They, they, you know, the Heat are not letting up. So you saw Tyrese Maxey find his confidence in this last game, which is what game two was actually about. I think the Tyler Hero performance was game one. But game two was basically Tyrese Maxey finding his way, but didn't get a whole lot out of anyone else, you know. And that has been the problem. I think DeAndre Jordan, as much has been said about how he's been starting, you know, they've been putting an emphasis on wanting to replace uh, Joel Embiid with a center. The problem is they don't have one roster that they can really rely upon other than DeAndre. And DeAndre's not reliable. So, you know, much has been said about them possibly go, excuse me, going small and maybe, you know, so having some success doing that since they have so many different players uh, that should, in theory, be able to play well in those lineups but uh doc rivers has opted to go a different route and uh no success so uh you're looking at a situation where he's gone to fork on cork moss a little more that's a guy that i think can score some for them that i've been saying they should play a lot uh paul reed has found himself in these playoffs which is really really exciting for what they can do next season in terms of incorporating him uh more so into what they do or if they want to move him uh his value has increased dramatically uh, in these playoffs so you like that doc has entrusted um has, has instilled some some faith in him uh i think that's one thing you could say you like that um i don't know where shake milton is i've mentioned his name several times he's not the only guy that's disappeared but he is the one that i think is pretty good that has not helped the team you know if he were the Shake Milton that I remember him being about a year and a half ago when he was on my fantasy team playing well for someone who had filled in who was hurt that would be somebody who would really, really, really help them. If he could just step up and give them 15 points, five assists, bro. I don't know where that confidence is. I don't know how Doc is using him, but I can tell you that the production that he's capable of, you're not seeing in the minutes that he's given. So he's been one of the bigger disappointments for me personally in these playoffs. I, I, where the hell are you, Shake? <laughs> like, where, I'm not saying you a star, but... You know, when when you know a guy can can go a little bit, when you know a role player can go a little bit and you see nothing, it's where are you? That's all I'm saying. I don't think anybody's going to be calling him out but me. But I'm where is he? That's all, that's all I'm saying. The bench for the Philadelphia 76ers has been um, anemic, both defensively and offensively. I mean, they've shown a lot of heart with the minutes they've given. And like I said, Doc has sh sh shortened his bench in such a way that hasn't given a lot of opportunities to a lot of guys. And I do think that's part of the problem. Um, I look at the bottom of their bench. I say, okay, they have Isaiah Joe. I think he's a point guard, but I don't know. You know what I mean? They got another guy over there, name I didn't even really recognize. It's a lot of that going on. And I just think 
this is where you go wrong when you make certain types of trades, get a James Harden, give away key pieces. You find yourself in a situation where you don't have enough. So that's Philly's situation without Joel Embiid. They need him to put on that mask and go tonight. And if I think, I think if there's any possible way he can do that, uh, he will. As far as the Miami Heat is concerned, uh, you know, to be honest with you, they're coasting. I, I, I look at that team and I just say uh, they're getting so much out of players that you've never heard of. They, too, are entrusting names like Gabe Vincent and, and Max Struess and, and Dwayne Dedman. And those guys have played extremely well. Victor Oladipo had a good game in this last game. Tyler Hero's been great in these playoffs. And Duncan Robinson's been relaxing. They haven't even really need to activate him for anything. He's resting if he has any knick-knack injuries or anything like that. He's not being used at all, so he can heal up. Um, I do think it's just for matchup purposes. He's obviously somebody they believe in, but, you know, you, you could just – you see they have so much depth that they could win in other areas, and it's, it's going just fine for them. Uh, Kyle Lowry is still out. I'm not sure what his status is for tonight. Um, Jimmy Butler, same thing, although I'd imagine Jimmy should be good to go. Uh, Bam Adebayo is dealing with a little bit of – ailment so you know if I'm Miami I don't know if I'm sitting Bam but I'm probably going to play a little more Yurt 7 a little more Dwayne Dedman a little more small ball maybe it's to give him a little bit of a break I think with the Miami Heat having so much um, give I guess in this series with these with these teams that they're running into in these playoffs I think the, the goal for them should be more so to just continue to run good stuff with the players that they're trying stuff with continue to play good team defense get the morale as completely high and engaged as possible obviously and just continue to coast because this is not a series where you really have to micromanage the details I think I mean obviously if you're, you're a well-oiled machine like the Miami Heat you're going to do that anyway but I think you get more room for error in a series like this so long as Joel Embiid is out. Now, if Joel is back, which is the assumption that we're going to work under, then you got to understand that now you're slipping everybody back to their regular positions. Now you're slipping everybody back into a situation where now Tyrese Maxey doesn't have to be the number one. Now James Harden doesn't have to hoist more than 16 shots. Now, you know, we're not looking for Paul Reed to play well or anything like that you're not you're not doing any of that what you're doing is now redirecting your thought to okay Joel Embiid still has his finger Joel Embiid now has his finger and his eye so the thing that I'm doing if he checks in I'm swiping at that I know that's awful it's a horrible thing to say but I'm trying to give you the mentality of what I think the Heat probably are gonna be on they're gonna try to rough him up what you want to do is sit his butt right back down. You got him standing up. He wants to desperately play this game. You need to make him as uncomfortable as possible to sit him right back down. You don't want him playing the series. Two reasons. One, with with all due respects to Bam out of bio, Bam's gonna get outclassed by that guy. And Bam's already un, he's already not healthy. So he's been able to enjoy not dealing with banging with this man. Now you have to put Bam on him. And I don't like that for Bam's help. See what I'm saying? Now you're looking at a situation where, yeah, you could try putting Dwayne Dedman on him for sure. D Dwayne's going to put up some good numbers, but he's going he to drop 50 on Dwayne. You can't play your seven now. You can't go small now. You, you see what I'm saying? He, he makes it so that the Miami Heat have to restructure everything that they're doing. Um, I'm sure they've had a plan for him for months that they can just now reactivate. But, again, you're talking about now, okay, now you're missing Kyle Lowry. Not necessarily missing him now, but are you bringing him 40 points to Joel, 40 points, 18 rebounds, or whatever going, Joel's going to put up? Now you need that production as to where you didn't. You can't afford to have Max Struess go three for You can't afford for Gabe Vincent to go three for They have to be more efficient because now you're dealing with that monster. And foul trouble. Joel's going to draw fouls. You're going to look to foul him, which means he's going to be pulling players off your lineup. Your depth is more important. So it's a lot of different things that, that he does that creates problems for the Heat. Now, they should beat him anyway because I would have picked them to win this series uh, anyway. But the one thing I learned about Joel Embiid is what you all already knew. And that is he's really unstoppable. Like, he's actually unstoppable. There's a couple players in this league who are unstoppable. He is one of them. And so if he if he stays out of foul trouble, you're basically going to have to deal with him. It's up to him and, his, and, and where his mind is in terms of his 
his pain tolerance and, 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 and just the psychological aspect of his injuries. If he's cool, then he's 100%. Um, you know, Bam has to be, Bam has to be the guy. He has to check him. And I I don't I don't doubt Bam. He's one of the best defensive players in the, in the league. But that's a tall task, man. That's a tall task, and, and he's going to stay out of foul trouble, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I don't I don't love this game for the Heat because Joel's coming back, and they're going to have to adjust to that. And that adjustment is substantial. Now, on the flip side is Philadelphia has to adjust to that too. And so a lot of times that is a bad thing for the team that's getting the, the guy back. But this guy, this particular guy, he bringing him back is not a bad thing for the Philadelphia 76 Even at uh, half of himself, he's still very much needed for obviously the functioning of their roster. So uh, their defense is going to be better tonight if he's out there. Obviously, um, guys are going to play hard. But it, 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 you still need something out of guys. You know, I'm thinking about um, 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 uh, George Niang. They've been calling his number a lot. He ain't been playing well in this series. I don't know if you, you sit him, maybe go in a different direction. I, I personally go with more cork moss myself. But, you know, that's he's going to be somebody I'm looking at and say, okay, you need him to bounce back. Matisse Thibel, you know, I, I don't know how they're using him in this series. To me, he is so much better of a player than I think Philly's letting him be seen as because of his offensive deficiencies. If you look at like Dwight Powell, you look at some of these players that we talk about uh, who don't have a whole lot of offensive skills, they're getting playing time. I don't see why Ty Thibel can't get playing time um, doing some of the same stuff. He could play center. In fact, you probably want him to be, and he's not a scorer. He's a better defensive player than a lot of the centers out there anyway, so he's going to overachieve in situations. I just felt like they missed opportunities by not running him at the center. Because at the end of the day, he's not going to space the floor, so you might as well have him in the paint. He is a fantastic defensive player who's probably going to pull the rug on those guys, steal the ball from them, draw fouls from them big dudes. He is exactly the type of small guy that I want on a big guy. So, I don't know. I, I just think Doc, you know, didn't try that. You love what you see out of uh, Tobias Harris. It would be wonderful if he can if he could, uh, take that even up to another level, you know. Uh, when you see a guy playing as well as he has over the last several weeks, hasn't really dropped off but once in like seven games, you're like, all right, love what you're seeing. Can you can you do more? Because you need him to. You know what I mean? It's like, shoot, you're giving me, you're giving me 25. Can you give me 30? That's where I'm at with Tobias Harris because you just need to find that production. If the bench ain't going to give it to him, if Maxie's going to be all in, if Harden's going to be wherever he is, then you need the guys who are playing well to play even better. So that's the challenge. Um, and that's really it, man. I look at the Philadelphia 76ers and I do like them for this game if, if, if Joel plays. Uh, the series is headed back to their house. Um, the Miami Heat do have to adjust to that massive defensive uh, assignment that's now going to be incorporated into their situation and or the unknown aspect of it, which I think is what they're doing. They're, they're saying we don't know if he's playing, even though I believe he is. It's to keep the Miami Heat off their off their off their toes. So, all in all, I like this game for Philly. I really do. Philly has shown that they can overachieve defensively when they're motivated. I saw that against the the Toronto Raptors in the last series. They shouldn't have been able to keep up with them forwards, but they did. Why? Because Joel Embiid was out there helping them defensively. And as someone else said, the Miami Heat are just a little bit better version or a lot better version than the Toronto Raptors. They're structured pretty much the same way. I think they're going to have some success against this team so long as Jimmy Butler takes his foot off the gas just a little bit. Because, my God, the way he's facilitating and scoring, Jimmy ain't going to have a lot to say about that, especially given the fact that, of course, he used to play for the Philadelphia 76ers. So, you know, his return to Philly is going to be pretty spirited as well. Keep an eye on that fan base. That energy is going to be there for him. So, this is going to be fun. I'm actually looking forward to this particular matchup. The more I talk about it, the more I'm excited about it. Because I wasn't interested in this series because I felt like Joel Embiid was the only way they had any shot of winning a game. But if they have them out there, I give them a shot at winning too. You know, simple as that. They just need that big fella. I don't look at Miami Heat, and, and this this is what it, this is what it is. I don't look at the Miami Heat as an imposing team in terms of size. They are the exact type of team that should be susceptible to being destroyed by a Giannis or a Joel. Because at the end of the day, after Bam, they really don't have that interior presence. 
I like P.J. Tucker, and I think he does a fantastic job. But he ain't going to do nothing against none of those juggernaut-type dudes. You need Bam to be overwhelmingly great defensively in order to, to have the success you need to shut one of those guys down. And with him not being at 100%, I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Now, granted, they still got the Tyler Heroes and all the help that they get from their others, which could, in theory, still help them win this game. But the fact that it's on the road, the the, the uh, emotional aspect of Joel B coming back, if he does, the fact that it's in Philly, it's a last hurrah type of game. If they go down 0-3, they know it's over. All of this is just pointing toward the momentum and, and, and everything being about Philadelphia tonight. So I expect them to take advantage of that. And, uh, and 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 do they do what they need to do to get a victory in the series at home, you know? And, and, and a lot of pressures on James Harden. Look, a lot has been said about James Harden not shooting the ball enough, his inefficiency. He's not that guy anymore. We've said it here. He's not that guy. Give him a year and a half. He'll get his conditioning together, get used to his body not being what it once was. But as for right now, he ain't gonna be ever what he ain't gonna be what you want him to be right now. That's my take. Okay, give him a year and a half. He'll get used to himself. But right now, he ain't you know. He's not going to be that guy. They need Tyrese Maxey to be that guy, and I think he can be so long as he stays aggressive. But tonight, James Harden will play well. James Harden is going to play well tonight. This is the very type of game that most people expect James Harden to disappear. So I get where people think I'm kind of going a different direction, but this is a night where I really do expect James to play well. He's learned to facilitate. That's why. He's not relying upon scoring the ball for him to play well. That's the thing. I know that. I recognize that. He's looking to get double-digit assists. If he gets double-digit assists, he's had a good game. That's how I'm judging it. He's going to have a good game. He's going off. He's going to have probably about 15, 14, 15 assists tonight if guys can hit shots. Because he knows he can't get past people. He knows he's not hitting the three like that. He knows this, that, and the third. He also knows he has a hot Tobias Harris. Joel Embiid is back. And he's got Tyrese Maxey, who's coming off a really hot game. All three of those guys, I expect to score over 20 points, and he's going to be the one getting them the ball. He's going off tonight. So that's what I expect to see, man. I'm going to give Philly this game. I hope I'm right, man. I kind of want to see Philly get a win tonight. Just, I don't know. They've been through a lot. I've been kicking their butts all year long, but at the end of the day, I'm sure they got some good fans, some little kids or something like that who deserve to see a victory after a tumultuously tough season in a heartbreaking situation with the Ben Simmons thing. So, all in all, go Philly for the night. BDL44, thank you all for watching. I'm out.